What a beautiful name it is. Come on, church. What a beautiful name it is. Sing it with me. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. Sing it. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name. You didn't want heaven without us. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My God, my God. My sin was great. Your love was greater. My God. And what could separate us now? What a beautiful name it is. Sing it. What a beautiful name it is. Come on. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Father, speak to your people on this morning. As we continue our teaching on the Holy Spirit, your teacher. I pray that the Holy Ghost would give revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding to the point that even a child would be able to understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the church this morning. Have your way in our lives, God. We surrender, not our will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say a good amen right there. And so we are picking up pretty much where we left off on yesterday. I know we call this today the Holy Spirit, your teacher. You'll see why in a minute. But we are continuing. So I want to pick up right there in John chapter 14, verse 26, where Jesus said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, in my name. That right there is so important for you to remember. The Holy Ghost is here in Christ's name. That means he is here in Christ's authority, in Christ's power, in Christ's stead, in his ability. Are you listening to me, friends? That right there is crucial because it's through the Holy Ghost that when you use the name of Jesus, the devil has to go. Sickness begins to flee. Diseases have to leave the room and have to come from out of people's bodies. Watch this. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So you see, the Holy Ghost is a teacher in our life. He is a guide. He is an intercessor. He is an advocate. It, the word comfort also means call to one's side. Call to one's aid. Are you listening to me? Man, this, this is powerful. Every time I read over this stuff, it just... It, it just really builds my faith. And then listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus said, however, when he, the spirit of truth, notice he calls him the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth, not just any kind of truth now. There's a whole lot of false truths out there, but the truth Jesus is talking about here is the word of God. John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus said, thy word, O Lord, is truth. 
So the tool that the Holy Ghost uses to teach us and lead us and guide us and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on how God does things, it's through the written word of the living God. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, Jesus said he will guide you. The word guide means to teach, to instruct, to lead. He will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he's going to speak. And not only that, but the Holy Ghost will show you things to come. How does he show us? He shows, he shows it to us through images in the mind. He, he shows it to us through strong thoughts that we can't shake. Have you ever just had what we call a gut feeling about something? Uh, that's the work of the Holy Ghost in your life. That what you call that gut feeling, that's the Holy Ghost leading you. You ever had uh, just all of a sudden, you just had a check about somebody. Hey, don't trust that person. If you trust that person, they're going to burn you. That's the Holy Ghost in you at work. He is warning you. Have you ever been reading your Bible and all of a sudden, the, a scripture just, bam, comes alive. You read the scripture a hundred times and it didn't never mean anything to you. But all of a sudden, the, I mean, it just lights up and you gain understanding and you know exactly what the word of God is saying to you. Well, listen, that's the work of the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Spirit bringing to your remembrance. That's the Holy Ghost teaching you. That's the Holy Ghost instructing you. That's the Holy Ghost warning you. That's the Holy Ghost guiding you. Are you listening to me? He is alive. He is active in our lives. How Listen, let me ask you this question. Have you ever got a check about something and you, you just ignored the check, ruled it out and did what you want to do? Oh, there's a tough price to pay. The consequences. We've all been there. Man, if you get a check about something, you know, we call it a red light. Man, I got a red light. I don't have a green light. That's the Holy Ghost at work in you. If you get a check in your spirit, you better put the brakes on because the Holy Ghost trying to save you from catastrophe. I can't tell you how much people that just refuse to admit that the mess they are in right now, they cost it on themselves because they did not listen to the Holy Ghost. Look, I had to make things right with God. I had to admit, God, I messed up. I did not follow the Holy Ghost. I did what I wanted. Come on, man. You, 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 got to, you got to repent and make it right with God so the Holy Ghost can continue to lead you. When you mess up, admit it. Take responsibility. Grow up and then shake the dust off and move on. If this is for someone now, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is therefore now, Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It's not God who condemns, it's the devil who condemns. Even Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came that the world through me might be saved. So when you're feeling condemned for doing something wrong, that's the enemy condemning you. The Holy Ghost convicts, he convicts you and leads you to repent. That's the way God works. Now watch this, I wanna, I wanna show you some examples of the Holy Ghost involved in the lives of the apostle. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 15, verse 28 and 29. The Bible says the apostles had a very important decision to make that would have a real serious impact on the Gentile part of the church because the Gentiles were now getting saved. And you had some of the Pharisees wanted them to keep all the, obey all the law of Moses. And the law, Jesus came to fulfill the law. Are you listening to me? No more sacrificing the animals and doing certain things. It didn't mean you can live your life any way you want to. Now watch it. So watch this. So the apostles came to this decision and listen to what they said in Acts chapter 15, verse 28. Listen to what the apostle said. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. Fare ye well. So they said it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. So it was the Holy Spirit giving them revelation knowledge from the word of God and leading these men, letting them know and giving them peace in their hearts that the decision they were making was the correct decision. 
So the Holy Ghost should be involved in our decision making. He wants to be involved. He is there to help us, but we blow it when we forget to call on him for help. The Holy Ghost lives in you. Are you hearing me? He is there 24, 7, 365 days out of the year. The Holy Ghost lives in you. Man, that, 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 listen, when I got a hold of that revelation, it was June 2000, that Christ lives in me. The Holy Ghost lives in me. That Christ lives in me scripture, it revolutionized me. Change, man, I, I listen, I felt shackles fall off me when I realized that Christ lives on the inside of me. It, it just, it, it just, it, it just, it, it just really, it, it just changed my life. And when I got a, when I got that revelation that Christ is alive in me, the Holy Ghost was revealing that to me. It gave me confidence to pray for the sick and believe God for the miraculous because I realized it wasn't me doing the works. It's Jesus Christ who lives in me doing the works. It's the Holy Ghost in me doing the works. It's the Father in me doing the works. We are boon of his boons and flesh of his flesh. Oh my God, did you hear the scripture I quoted to you? We are boons of his boons and flesh of his flesh. That's how connected we are to Jesus. That right there. I can, listen, every time I think about that scripture, I can feel the presence of the living God. That's how connected we are to him. <laughs> my God, my God, I feel that anointing this morning. Do you feel the Holy Ghost? Just give me my soft music. I feel a special anointing. My God, you are connected. The Holy Ghost lives in you. He is there to lead you. He is there to guide you. He is there to comfort you. He is there to counsel you. He is there to instruct you. You never, you will never walk this road alone because Jesus said the Holy Ghost will live in you forever. Even when we get into heaven, the Holy Ghost is still gonna be living in us. Man, the shout news. The Holy Ghost is with you right now. Now, and, and listen. This is why the enemy tried to lie to us and deceive us. And he don't want us studying the Bible. He don't want us listening to programs like this. Because when you begin to understand that the great Holy Ghost that lived in Christ, that lived in the Apostle Peter, that lived in Paul, that lived in Moses, that lived in Elijah and Elisha the prophet, when you realize the same Spirit of God that lived in those men, that performed the miracles, it will change your life forever. There is no way you can remain the same. When you realize the Holy Ghost is that much involved in your life, Jesus couldn't work one miracle without the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the one who said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. My God, my God, isn't our God just awesome? What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. Come on, sing it. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. Father, I pray over your people on this morning. I pray that you give them wisdom, revelation, knowledge. God, this truth, help your people to realize this is the secret to victory. Jesus prayed that the Holy Ghost, that the Father would send the Holy Ghost to live in us forever. You did not leave us as orphans. You didn't leave us without someone to walk this road with us. You didn't leave us to figure this out on our own. The Holy Ghost is in us to assist us, to teach us, but we have to call on him. We got to remember it. God, bring the body of Christ into a greater awareness of the presence of the Holy Ghost, living in them to accomplish the mission of Christ on this earth. Help us, God, to grow in this knowledge and awareness that we are never alone because the Holy Ghost lives in us. He is with us forever. Listen here, friend. I want to give you an opportunity to support the work of God. We are preaching the gospel 
of the Lord Jesus Christ and we are not ashamed. Oh, we are not ashamed of this gospel. We're going to preach this until the day we die. We are lifting the name of Jesus high. That's what the Holy Ghost does when he comes to live in you. He brings glory to Jesus. That's what he does. So we ask you to support the work of God. Visit us online right now. SeanPinder.net forward slash give and sow a seed into the ministry. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pender Ministries. PayPal.me forward slash Sean Pender Ministries. You can also mail in your donations and offerings and just make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pender Ministries, P.O. Box 117442, Carrollton, Texas 75011-7442. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, my lovely wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We care about you. We want to give you everything that God has for you. Everything that God have taught us and will continue to teach us. And as we grow in our relationship with God, our commitment is to pass on everything to you that God through his Holy Spirit is teaching to us from this word about the things of God. We will hold nothing back from you. You know we love you. We appreciate you so much. And don't forget, I will be in Freeport, Bahamas, March to 8 and 9 for a miracle crusade. I'm inviting everyone under the sound of my voice to join us in Freeport, Bahamas, March to 8 and the 9th. We will be at the Bahamas Union Teachers Hall building on Pioneer's Loop. We will be there for three meetings. We'll be there on March to 8 that Friday night at 7 p.m. And on March the 9th, we will be there Saturday morning at 10 a.m. and Saturday night at 7 p.m. We will be there for three miracle services. We will be preaching the gospel in the power of the Holy Ghost and we will be praying for the sick. If you need a miracle in your body, if you need a healing in your body, you do not want to miss these meetings. Mark the dates, save the dates. Be in, be in those meetings because the power and the presence of God is going to move mightily. When all the saints get together, believing God for the miraculous, there is always an outpouring of signs, wonders, and miracles following the preaching of the gospel. I will love to see you at those meetings in the Bahamas. It's a special invitation from me and Pastor Amy. Meet us in the Bahamas, March the 8th and the 9th. That's of this year, 2019. We love you. God bless you. Take care now. Bye-bye.